I don't believe the foolish ones will say that the, uh, that, that the proof that, the, that we have to establish the Khilafah in the world today is that the Messenger of Allah said that whoever dies not giving the bayah, then he dies the death of Jahiliyyah. So therefore, if you do not give the bayah, then you die the death, death of Jahiliyyah. So you have two aspects in this regard from two groups of innovators, both of them Khawarij. One group says, I am the Amir, so to remove you from the sin of Jahiliyyah, you must give me the bayah. This is this so-called Jamaat al-Muslimin that is established in London with about, you know, seven followers. Then you have another group of people, Hizb al-Tahrir, who take it the other direction. They say that since we have, since there is no one to give the bayah to, then all of you are in a state of Jahiliyyah. All of you are in a state of Jahiliyyah because they believe that there is no Dharma Islam in the world today. Hizb al-Tahrir on their own website say, the whole of the earth is Dharma al-Qusr. Or Darul Harb. There is no Darul Islam in the world today. This is, this is a statement that is, that is exactly the same statement as Saint Qutb. That we are living in a time of Jahil. No Darul Islam in the world today. There is not a single place of Islam in the world today. All of it is Kufr. So they say since there is no Darul Islam, all of it is Darul Kufr. So therefore there is no one to give the bayah to. So therefore, we have to work to establish, to find someone to give the bayah to. And up until you do this, all of you in Jahiliyyah. So this, therefore, is an obligatory, they claim, to establish the Islamic State. But, unbeknown to the majority of the, of the Muslims, is that they do have a bear. Within their organization, Hizb al-Tahrir, they have membership, which is Sirriya, which is, which is a hidden membership. They have secret societies that are hidden, which they themselves admit to, that they have to hide. Why? Because they say the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hid. He was a political leader, and the whole of the messenger, of the, the message of the messenger of Allah, all of it was political. And in Mecca, he was in hiding. So we are in a period in certain countries we have to hide, and we have to spread our message secretly. So when that youth understands all of the ideology of his Tahrir, then he can openly proclaim, because that's what the messenger of Allah did. He openly proclaimed after spreading the political ideology amongst his followers. So he didn't come with Islam and the deen and the aqidah and tawheed, he came with a political ideology in the eyes of Islam al-Tahrir. So they say that, so, they, so this bayah is in fact something which is false. It has no proof from the book of the Sunnah. Even when you are upon the suffer, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said that let not uh, two of you travel or three of you travel except that you appoint an amir. The one who does not have an Amir, then the Shaitan is the Amir. But even in that context, there's no bayah. You don't sit down with the man, take his hand and kiss his hand and say, I pledge, I pledge my vow of allegiance to you, that I will hear you and I will obey you and I will do this for you and I will die for you and I... Even on the Suffer, who's an Amir, he's an Amir of the Suffer. But that's all the Amir, the, 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 the authority that he has is only upon the journey. Now, upon any other aspect of your life, you can't say to you on the journey, or we're on the journey, I'm your media, except you as your media, except you're going to divorce your wife. Can you do that? The answer is no. The answer is no. As the scholars have mentioned, there are two or three types of Amir. The first one is the Amir al The Amir al And he is the head of state, the head of government, in the Muslim land. And they are present in the world today. They are the Umara. The rulers of the land in the Gulf countries, they are Umara, they are rulers. Whether they are righteous or whether they are unrighteous. Whether they are pious or impious, they are still rulers. Because it's not a condition from the Sharia that the ruler has to be pious before you obey him. That's not a condition. Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a hadith that you will have rulers over you, they have the hearts of devils and the bodies of men. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, how should you be with them? So the Prophet ﷺ said, here and obey the Amir. So the Amir can even have the heart of a devil. And the Prophet ﷺ said, here and obey the Amir. Secondly, the Amir that is upon the journey. That is the one that is appointed. I think a group of brothers want to go from Birmingham to Manchester, or Birmingham to London, or London to whatever place. So there are four or five of them. And one of them is appointed as the Amir of the journey. He is the one who is appointed as the Amir of the journey. And that's all he is, the Amir of that particular journey, nothing else. Not the Amir over his life. Not commanding him to divorce or marry or this and go and fight rather upon a journey. I, I order you to go and blow up that place. Just for the journey, to make the journey easy, to avoid confusion. 
Thirdly, the Amir, as Shaykh Al-Fawzan mentions, is the Amir who is appointed by the Amir of Mu'mineen, the Amir of Jihad. So, you have Amir of Mu'mineen, who is the leader of the Muslims. So he has a jaysh, he has an army. The army has various generals, what we call in modern time generals, and the commanders and so on. In the, so the Amir of Mu'mineen appoints each one of them. You are the general of that battalion. You are the one who is the Amir of that battalion. But he is appointed by the Amir of Mu'mineen. There is no fourth, there is no fifth, there is no sixth. And there is definitely one not, not living in London in a council flat. 